this is simply a sharing of pragmatic self-introspections for survival. Nothing more, nothing less. Once again, Holdis Otto would like to humbly say and express his well wishes to any or all who is affected by homelessness. He would nevertheless encourage such individuals who are likewise under the brink of such hardships to at least contact their nearest helping guidances. Whichever ones and or wherever ones closest to them, be it that at community shelters and or community support centers, charity support groups, and the like. Homelessness is such a taboo topic that may yet happen to anyone, irrespective of character, irrespective of virtues. Number one is when it comes to food storage. Does the individual in question have adequate food storage? Food storage meaning that does the individual in question have adequate Tupperwares and or enclosed storage spaces e.g. other than clothing and or um, adequate blankets? Is there a um, at least some means of storing food supplies? This can be as simple as buying Tupperwares. First and foremost, arguably speaking, the very first thing that we should determine is whether or not the individual in question have access to the most basic of human need, that is, adequate access to safe drinking water. Now, this entire video presentation assumes, only assumes, under the security and assumption, presumption, that the individual in question that the readers are helping towards, nevertheless have already some existing means of adequate water supply. However, if this is not the case, then please exercise your due diligence to determine first and foremost whether or not they can able they can indeed able to secure um, access to a regular safe drinking water. Throughout this presentation, dehydration is will be such a topic and theme of concern that will be repeated overall in writing form because of the fact that many of these foods, especially those that contains high amount of fibers, will likely warrant the need and attention to ensure that first and foremost, adequate water supply must never be ignored nor neglected. And also, this leads us to the next um, prerequisites before we get to discuss what food options there are, and that is adequate salt intakes. This may yet be going against, against our institutionalized dogma as such that salt is bad for us. However, in the context of life or starvation, death, we have to make sure that intermittent fasting is already most unlikely, most likely to be an already regular occurrence to these individuals in question. So hence, we must make sure that adequate electrolyte supplies, be they coming from from a range of spectrum of salts, be they from, from sodium, potassium, magnesium, etc. Although, again, the calcium, magnesium, potassium must ideally be coming from food. However, the very first thing, the very first and foremost of all importance is for us to make sure that for each and every bundle of goods that we wish to buy for this individual in question, we must never forget to always leave a, a, um, a grinder salt in, in its grinder form. And that is important to make sure that they can reuse such a grinding um, tool and or container to grind other up, to grind other spices if if there is indeed an opportunity for them to receive another gratuity from another kind passerby to grant them another, um, another uh, purchase of spices and the like. So hence, that is that when it comes to the importance of making sure that very base, the very basic essentiality to maintain hydration, be it salt and adequate water supply, and the need for storage and transporting foods and or small goods are catered for. Before we can then move on to the food presentation themselves.
there's always going to be some disagreements out of the choices that this author proposes to the table. Considering that we only have so few of number of dollars that we like to give away for. When it comes to lentils, beans, and legumes, it is always wise to buy a variety of different types of kidney beans, cannellini beans, butter beans, and then followed by the lentils and the, the legumes that's already being canned together, ready to eat without any means and or necessity towards cooking. The reason for buying a variety of these legumes is such that not everybody reacts um, favorably from one type of legume over another. This author himself is pretty much a living proof as such that, generally speaking, all almost all types of beans except split uh, lentils and of those that have already expedited the cooking process, nevertheless still be okay however they are still not without their questionable repercussions on the overall gut ecosystems and overall gut health despite however they are being constantly marketed amidst our um, pedestrian spaces today as gut friendly in which by the humble opinion of this author all milieus will likely vary all individuals will likely differ from responses in terms of consuming one type of beans to the next in terms of responding gut ecosystems wise as well as their immunity autoimmunity wise now there is a, uh, a big topic of concern in which unfortunately we won't go to today in which all of which remains yet to be an individual self scientific self introspections so therefore it is always wise to just keep to actually buy a no more than three cans of each type to provide enough diversity just so that the just for the just for the person to see which one they can actually react better with the least amount of side effects there is gut disturbances um and numerous gassing moments and or and or even inflammatory symptoms during eating and or after eating Another thing to keep in mind is that, unfortunately, this requires boiling water as a prerequisite. That would be for us to consider buying soya wadi. Yes, even though that it is one of the most economical source of vegetable source of protein, as such that soya wadi is more or less derived from the same derivative type of soy um, uh, textured vegetable protein or soy protein isolate powders, as such that they have been dried and overly processed such that yes it does um, create some concerns that way even however other concerns does pertain with the fact that some individuals especially those among the elderly may yet be already be prone towards kidney stone formations as such that soy protein isolates have been very well researched and very well documented to therefore be not so of a uh, healthful or productive pragmatic choices And last but not least, we have other recommended sources that are coming from canned meats such as canned tuna, canned salmon, and or canned seafood in general. However, once again, we have to keep in mind that this good, this much of these canned goods are meant to be consumed in a relatively short amount of time. So for as long as it is kept as far away from the summer heat and that it is like always just just put it under an enclosed container without harsh sunlight once again next we have the carbohydrates generally speaking cereals and or those that contains very uh, simple sugars may not be the most once again may not be the most helpful and productive and or meaningful um, purchases especially with the fact that they can be quite easy to overeat. However, it does not mean to say that they are uh, not to be considered. 
especially if readers can actually find those um, short dated bakery goods for under 50 cents or under a dollar or even as low as 50 cents as a discretionary consumption have one or two uh, buy no more than one such article or item however there are still some meaningful um, options that we have to consider number one is such that again this may not be up to everyone's standard but that is to do with whole meal variety of of breads and or bakery goods now but considering the fact that many people are still un, are still fixated under the idea that um, that short dated breads are actually dangerous to consume well they have to keep our diligence as such that number one the bread and, and or the bakery goods itself is not heavily discolored nor does it actually gives off any strange um, odors or sm or foul smelling then it is nevertheless remains okay and this may yet again be not so popular will be uh, consider consuming raw oats oatmeal just it does not have to be bought from well-known package brands at all quick oats are pretty much branded as exactly as they're intended for for quicker consumption and yes it may not be the most satiating however we also have to keep in mind that we have to combine with other means of condiments and of flavorants just to make things worthwhile considering that it does not need to be refrigerated and that uh, and that ideally speaking that yes it does require cooking however if we are only using it under say no more than a handful of months at a time as a um, as a replacement source of carbohydrates then all is said and done however yes this author remains fully aware of the so-called arguments surrounding phytic acids, phytates, anti-nutrients, lactins, to name a few. Yes, those things exist, especially when actually consuming these things raw and or uncooked. However, keeping in mind, this is all about survival. There are some things that we have to let go and some things we have to accept nevertheless. Many people advocate the purchasing of crackers and or snacks however ironically those items are very very expensive this author is remains clueless as to why people would uh, immediately resort to buying these snacks as as a uh, as viable options in which unfortunately we just need to perhaps revise our common senses Last but not least, the other thing that this author would like to briefly discuss is fruits and or source of fructose. Unfortunately, this will be a no, provided with the fact that under this author's own research, especially personal research and dissertation towards, his, towards the technical accompanying manuscript on dietary glycation and products, fructose, especially those that are coming from um, synthetically isolated fructose may not be the most healthful replacement to sh even sugar by itself for a reason that they are has been shown under various reputable journals references and scientific experiments nevertheless time and time again to actually induce the most potent glycation potential so hence it's a uh, fruits especially those that are uh, all these shown signs of of spoilage may not be once again as one would expect may not be the most um, helpful of may not be the most helpful source of carbohydrates but then again whether or not we have to also consider as to the consumption window more often than not when we buy this food for that homeless individual he or she may not yet be granted with another opportunity likewise that we should nevertheless just lightly ad lightly advise to the person that we're buying for is that some things are best to be consumed in this order from from the most from ones that is most likely to spoil to the then to the next down to the line that is less likely to spoil 
and go from there. At least that is one route of a uh, um, of a pragmatic logistics of a uh, of an advice that he would actually just kindly um, tell and or advice in front of the person that he's buying for. Why desiccated coconuts? Well, given by their saturated fats makeup structure, they remain solid at room temperature and that conveniently enough, if we are actually very generous enough, we may even consider coconut oil, in which that in itself is very convenient, as such that it is not prone to lipid, peroxid, uh, lipid peroxidation under normal uh, room uh, temperature conditions and that if we are buying this in winter, even better, as such that it remains even stable that way as such that the uh, coconut oil will definitely solidify over time we, and therefore we could pretty much use it technically speaking as a uh, spread and and also with the desiccated coconut uh, and or shredded coconut in which this is preferably much more convenient this way is that it is powder it doesn't it does not need refrigeration and that uh, when it comes to storage wise once again for as long as it is kept under a uh, an enclosed container without harsh sunlight then there there needs there is likely not going to be any uh hazards when it comes to lipid peroxid uh, lipid peroxidation overall unfortunately there seems to be a lot of other people recommending that they should buy a handful of nuts and or those trailer mixes and or those that, that are uh, packaged with crackers etc etc well and also consider that also as peanut butter as the as a very popular choice however this author has a number of reservations number one is such that unfortunately even though it, yes it may it may seem stable enough that they remain solid under room temperature they nevertheless remain again prone to lipid peroxidation agents as such that their the fatty acids makeup are still nevertheless largely composing that of monounsaturated ones and also with the fact that well are, and also accessibility wise they are just very very expensive so hence it is not viable for us to consider anyway should we only have a small a uh, few dollar changes we have to exercise some caution and to advise some cautionary measures as such that adequate water intake is first and foremost should be the priority because this author himself alone having can can attest as a living proof as such that should copious amounts of not only peanut butters, but also this applies to other nut sources as well, whether it be from almonds or any other tra trailers or nut mixes that one may find in, in packaged snack sizes, should they are consumed in copious amount of quantities, dehydration and excessive thirst will likely occur. This is not meant to be ignored upon, so please exercise our due diligence and the responsibility therefore to always advise safe access to safe drinking water at all times and to advise the individual in question that these nut sources should not should ideally not encompassing the majority of their fats intake due to the reason that we've, due to the hazards that we've discussed just then which is real possible risk towards dehydration especially if they are consumed in large quantities Obviously, first and foremost, when it comes to margarines and or table spreads, those are not healthful choices under the humble opinion of this author. However, should readers wishes to nevertheless be fixated under institutionalized belief that vegetable oils be in the form of, of hydrogenated uh, table spreads are good for everyone, then, then so be it. They remain their own indemnity and remember that this is someone else that they're trying to um, pay their due respect for to help them nevertheless so keep that in mind 
And interesting also with the number of suggestions surrounding the usage of those LSA um, mixed nut sources. What this is is that these are usually packaged mixtures of either either linseed or flaxseed, sunflowers and almond meals. It, it might not be of, it might not be that safe of a suggestion because of the again the highly prone lipid peroxidation agents as such that if uh, once again the word lipid peroxidation here is always going to be a, a repeating concern over and over because take linseed and flaxseed for instance. If readers are not actually convinced over the fact that these are highly volatile um, proxidizing agents, just look at this particular brand, well-known brand example on the back. That it is indeed a, indeed it carries a flammable hazard. So it's so there we go. It's uh, it's one of those things that we have to pretty much uh, question everything and not to take everything that is imposed on us and or institutionalized upon us as a uh, as a as a fail-safe panacea we just we just have to remain ever so questionable at all times so what about flavoring and or condiments now we have either a choice between surprisingly enough either mayonnaise and or tomato paste and or tomato sauce ketchups and the like the reason being for these two condiment choices are such that, well, we can plainly see them as such that they have always been placed under store, st storm shelf life conditions for, uh, for very long periods of time. However, one thing to keep in mind is such that, that these liquid-based condiments may yet be prone towards other lipid peroxidation damages, especially when subjected towards um, dry and or harsh summer um, season temperatures in which therefore therefore buying these goods only during certain times of the year especially during winters and or the cooler seasons may yet be may yet be okay however provided also that the person who is keeping these supplies must exercise a bit of due diligence to also not expose this under bright sunlight for long periods of time because once again sunlight itself also creates radiation in itself which therefore attracts and and initiates uh, potential lipid peroxidation actions in which that is clearly what we do not want another thing that we can consider is the usage of dry spices chicken salt garlic salt and or those all-rounder natural spices in which those are actually very convenient sources of flavor uh, uh, of uh, ways of flavoring food however keeping in mind that unfortunately once again dried vegetable oils and the dried PUFA N6 omega-6 fatty acids may yet still be um, embedded within these products however during this dried forms are arguably although again it is subjective to more debate, may yet be prone towards uh, lipid peroxidation. However, it may yet be lesser because it is being dried and in its compacted form. However, once again, so long as we keep those diligence by advising the individual that it must be kept under under a blanket or just under under cool dark places, place, placement, whether it is in a container, away from dark sunlight, would pretty much be advisable. So hence, this author hopes that readers finding this video useful should they are actually stumble such opportunities and that the reason why this video presentation is made in the very first place is because of the fact that it is nothing more but a sore reminder to all of us that all of us were once poor, plunged towards relative moments of poverty beyond consent. There are readers who actually object against this uh, uh, video presentation's authenticity, such that it is fake and that it is it has, that this author is unable to provide any evidences. Indeed, that is correct. How visible is it for us to be able to ratify towards such opportunity to collect evidences? And not only that, are we are we even comfortable asking the person who is homeless to for us to be able to take a portion of their identity and for them to be um, showcased under social media? 
just think just think about the ethical repercussions this author would like to just humbly share his ideas and suggest and pragmatic and pragmatic suggestions without bordering towards virtue signaling take it or leave it this is simply a sharing of pragmatic self-introspections for survival nothing more nothing less because after all this concept initiative encourages lateral dialogues whereby decentralized nutritional science meets structural violence and scientific self-introspections leave it forward and thank you for watching